this video um, we're just gonna look at um, Matt's paper 2 for November 2021 um, for now we're just gonna look at analytical geometry which is in question 3 and question 4 so the entire video will consist of solutions of question 3 and question 4 of analytical geometry so now we're gonna do question 3 of the November 2021 past paper. So what we are given here, um, we are given a diagram which has four vertices, right? Um, three vertices, by the way, sorry. Um, so the first vertice um, is A, um, the second one is B, and the third one is C, right? And um, we are told that it cuts here at e of 12 to 0 and um, another important point is that we're having an angle of inclination here which is 81.87 degrees right so um it's important to note what you're given in the information first and then look at the diagram sometimes um the diagram might not contain everything so it's important that you also note what you're given in the statement and use it to solve the problem so um, going to 3.1 um, where we are asked to find the gradient of the uh, e um, knowing the e is just from this point here all the way up to e <coughs> excuse me so um, since um, c lies in the same line as be so we can simply use c and e to find the gradient right of pe because they, they they share the same gradient remember um, properties of collinear uh right so um they share the same line so we're just simply going to use um the point of c which is four and minus two excuse me <coughs> which is four and minus two and then you're gonna use e which is 12 and 0 right so finding the gradient of ce right knowing that it's also equals to the gradient of bc so the gradient of ce is going to be the change in y over change in x is equals to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 um, let's say this is your x1 this is your y1 and this is your x2 and this is your y2 and then um so we're simply going to say our y2 is 0 minus our y1 which is minus 2 divide by our x2 which is 12 minus our x1 which is 4 so gradient of ce um, you should get something like um, 1 over 4, right? So, therefore, the gradient of CE of CE is, let me write that properly. So, the gradient of CE is equals to the gradient of BE is equals to 1 over 4, right? So, that is the answer for this problem here. Yeah. And then um, we go to another part of the question where we ask to find the gradient of AB, right? So to find the gradient of AB, let's go look at the diagram. So we don't have the point of B, right? But we have the angle of inclination. So we can simply use that the gradient of AB um let me write that properly so the gradient of ab is equals to tan of theta right which is the angle of inclination right so um m of ab is equals to tan of the inclining angle right of 81 Point eight seven degrees and you're supposed to get 7 so the angle of I mean the gradient of AB is equals to 7 fine so we're done with this 
part of the question so we move on to another part which is 3.2 determine the equation of BE in the form of y is equals to mx plus c um, BE as uh, we calculated its gradient in the previous question this is the line of BE right okay it doesn't look like a line but yes this is the line of BE right and we found the gradient of BE to be equals to 1 over 4, right? So if we were to write y is equals to mx plus c, so it's y is equals to x over 4 plus c. Remember there's 1, so it's 1 over 4 plus c. So let me just write it properly so that everyone can just see. So it's 1 over 4, which is the gradient multiplied by x plus c, right? Um, since it's PE and we can use any point, we can use the point of C here or we can use the point of E here. Um, point, let me just use point of C which is 4 and minus 2 because we want to identify the y-intercept. So we're going to say minus 2 is equal to 1 over 4 into our x value is 4 plus C. So this 4 goes away with this 4 so it's minus 2 is equal to 1 plus c transpose the one to the other side with minus two minus one is equal to c so therefore c is equal to minus three right um, let me write that minus three properly um so c is equal to minus three right um so therefore our equation of be is equal to one over four x minus three so that is the equation of this problem here so we're done with this uh, 3.2 going to another part of the question so now um, in 3.3 3.3 we asked to calculate the coordinates of B so to find the coordinates of B, we now know the equation of BE, right? And we know the gradient of AB. So we know the equation of this line. I'm just going to indicate it with a red line. So this, we know the equation of BE. We just calculated it in the previous question of BE is equals to 1 over 4x minus 3, right? And we know the gradient of this line here gradient of BA right or you can say BF it's up to you um, we know the gradient is 7 right so um, we are asked to identify the coordinates of B we know B is given as K and K um, if you found, find just one value then we know that um, it's equals to the other one because it's uh, K and K right um, so B is given as K and K meaning that the x value of b is equal to the y value of b. Cool. So um, one another way of, of really finding the coordinates of b, um, one way or the other, it just depends on how you, you see this uh, problem here. What I'd first do is um, I already have the gradient of a, b, right? So let me first find the equation of uh, a, b. So the equation of AB, right? So let me first find the equation, um, remove this. So to find the equation of AB, um, first going to say, okay, find the equation is equals to um, MX plus C, right? And the gradient, we know the gradient is seven. So M of AB is equals to seven. So it's Y is equals to seven X plus C, right? And another thing is we can use the point, point A, to substitute to find the value of um, C, which is the y-intercept. So we can use minus 2 and 10 here. So it's going to be 10 is equal to 7 into minus 2 plus C. So it's equal to 10 is equal to minus 14 plus C. Transpose the minus 14 to the other side, we have C being equal to 24, right? So this is the um, y-intercept and then the equation um, the equation of AB is now equals to 7x plus 24 right and then 
what I needed to note is this. Okay, fine. Now, this is the equation of AP. Um, the equation of um, BE is equals to 1 over 4 x minus 3, right? So these are the two equations. Um, these two equations are equal to each other at a certain point, and that one point is B here, right? So if you can see this equation here and this equation here, they meet at B. So why not equate these two equations, right? So that we can find the coordinates of B, right? So let me just try and erase this here and just calculate um, the coordinates of B by equating these equations. So both equation one, so let me just indicate this is equation one, this is equation two. They're both equal, right? Um, so equation one is equals to equation two. So what is equation one? It's seven X plus 24 is equals to equation two, which is one over four X minus three. So then we're gonna collect the like terms. So it's going to be um, seven X plus minus one over four X, right? Is equals to minus three, um, plus into minus 24 so you can just write minus instead of putting this plus right so you can just you can just say 7x minus 1 over 4x is equals to minus 3 minus 24 right um, so you're just gonna add these like terms here and you're gonna add these like terms here or you can subtract it's just how you interpret it um, but yeah you're just gonna do that so once you do that 7x minus 1 over 4 um, is going to give you 27 over 4x being equals to minus 27, right? Um, so you're just going to divide by this and you should get your x value being equals to minus 4, right? So now we know the x value of b. It's equals to minus 4. So we don't need to calculate the value of y. Why? Because we already know that the x value of b is equals to the y value of b. How do we know that? We're given the, um, the, the coordinate form of b such that um, the x value is k and the y value is k, right? So, um, as I'm saying, uh, we are given that b is k and k right but we just found the x value of b which is equals to minus 4 so which means it makes b being equals to minus 4 and minus 4 so these are the coordinates of b um then okay let me just erase this so now um just going to 3.3.2 we are asked to find the angle or the size rather of a right so to do that excuse me to do that um we already have the angle of inclination right um angle of inclination and we're asked to find this angle here right so for us to find that angle we should um we should first find this angle here, right? The, la the, the angle of declination because it's decreasing. The, the line of AC is decreasing, right? So for us to find that, um, we must first identify the gradient of AC, right? If we identify that gradient, then we'll be able to identify the angle of declination. So we're having a being equals to minus two and ten. We're having c being equals to four and minus two, right? Um, so to find the gradient of this line, you're gonna say m of a c is equals to y two minus y one over x two minus x one. Um, with this being x one and this being y1, and this being x2, this being y2. So you're gonna have um, minus two minus 10 divided by four minus minus two, right? So it's going to be minus 12 over 
um, 6. Right. So the gradient of AC, the gradient of AC is going to be equal to minus 2. Right. So that is the gradient, right? But we want the angle of declination. So we're going to say the gradient of AC is equal to tan of theta. Right, and the gradient is minus 2 is equal to tan of theta, and we're getting theta to be equals to um, 63.43 right, degrees. So that is the angle of declination. You can just, you will probably get a negative here. Uh, let me just indicate you get a negative um, solution here, which just tells you that the direction of the movement of the angle is not the same as that one of inclination right so um, now that we know that this angle here it's actually equals to 63.43 degrees it's easier now to find this one here right so what we will do is um, the following so what we can do is is that um, we say in triangle A, F, G, right? Angle A, which is what we are looking for, plus angle F, which we know is the angle of inclination, plus angle G, which we now know is the angle of declination. It's equals to 180 degrees. So you write the reason sum of uh, angles of triangle. And then A is what we are looking for, is equals to, so it's plus, sorry, plus F, which is 81.87, plus 63.3, equals to 180. And then we transpose this to the other side, you should get your A value being equals to um 180 degrees minus 81.87 minus 63.3 right so the angle of a is going to be 34.7 degrees fine so now we found the angle of a Um, now let's go to 3.3.3. Coordinates or calculate, which is the first statement here, the coordinates of the point of intersection of the diagonals of a parallelogram, um, which are for, is formed as ACES, where S is a point in the quadrant, first quadrant. Right, so this is what we are told. We are told that S is the point in the first quadrant and um, that we're having a parallelogram of ACES. So it's A, which is this one here, AC, right? And um, what else is E? So it's heading towards E. And we are also told that we have S at the graph, but we're not told any information at the lens. So, but what, what I would assume is that um, he is, what I would assume is that S is somewhere here. Um, so this is X, this is Y, and then, uh, so this would be our parallelogram, right? even though it doesn't look so nice, um, but this is it, right? And um, what we are looking for is the, 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 the coordinates of the diagonals. So if we consider this as one of the diagonals, um, which means to find the coordinates, um, we need to find the midpoint of this line here. Line of AE, right? So, um, if this is A, which is minus 2 and 10, 
this is e which is 12 and 0 right and so now the midpoint um, is equals to we add all x values we divide by 2 so it's minus 2 plus 12 divide by 2 um, we're gonna get uh, 10 over 2 which is equals to 5 so that's the x value of the midpoint and then the y value of the midpoint is equal to 10 plus 0 over 2 which is equal to 5 right um, so now it concludes our coordinates of uh, the diagonals is just 5 and 5 and then so let me erase this Okay, so let's go to another question. Um, 3.4, right? Um, 3.4, we are given a point of T which has equal X and Y values where P is greater than zero and we are told that ET is equal to PE is equal to four to the root of 17 so now um 3.1 we are asked to calculate the coordinates of t so to solve this problem we remember that et is equals to be which is equals to 4 root of 17 right units um but e is given as um What's the uh, coordinate system for for e? We are given as twelve and zero, right? Um, so this is what you're gonna do: twelve and zero. So it's twelve and zero, and then for t, it's just p and p, right? So what we will first do is we're going to put these coordinates in the equation of the distance formula or the length formula which the distance formula is equals to the root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 right so um, we know overall that this is the distance which is 4 root of 17 being equals to so let's say this is x1 y1 x2 y2 right um, so just gonna substitute that inside here so it's going to be our x2 it's p our um, x1 so this is a 2 this is x1 so it's minus 12 all squared plus our y2 is p our y1 is 0 all squared like that and then equals to um, 4 root of 17 is going to give us the root of p minus 12 uh, p minus 12 p minus 12 plus p squared right um so this is inside the bracket so we have uh four root of 17 is equals to the root of um, p multiplied by p is p squared minus 12 p minus 12 p plus um, 144 right um, plus p squared so we have 4 root of 17 is equals to the root of add like terms p and p so it's 2p minus 24p um, plus 144 right um, so 
what we'll do is this we can square both sides right um, let me just fix this first so it's 2p squared because the p and p squared and the p squared um, add each other and then uh, minus 12 minus 12 is minus 24 and then the 144 so if we square both sides we will remain with um so so if you square four root of 17 you should get an answer of 272 being equal to so here we remain with 2p squared minus 24p um plus 144 right um so you're going to transpose uh, this to the other side you have 2p squared minus 24p right um plus 144 minus 272 equals to 0 and so it's 2p squared minus 24p and um, if you punch our calculator 144 minus 272 is giving me minus 128 equals to 0 and uh, you can divide this um, by 2 all sides, so you can say divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. Our p squared is minus um, 12p. Um, and then here, 1 to 8 divided by 2, you're going to get 64. Right? Um, so, um, and then now we can factorize or use quadratic formula to find both factors right um, if we use uh, let me see if we use the quadratic um, approach we can say when x is equal to minus b plus or minus root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a right so um, x is equal to minus our b is minus 12p and then um, plus or minus the root of minus 12 actually it's not minus 12p so it's going to be equals to minus our b is minus 12 plus or minus root of minus 12 whole squared minus 4 our a is 1 our c is minus 64 right and we divide everything by 2 into 1 which is 2a and then um, the final answers that you need to get if you punch your calculator is you need to get um, x being equals to 16 or x being equals to minus 4. so this means now that um, because you're calculating for p there so it means p is equal to 16 or p is equal to minus 4 and um, so those are the coordinates of uh, this one here which um, remember it p and p right and p must be greater than zero so this is out so t of p which is 16 and 16 so these are the coordinates of t now we're going to do 3.4.2 we are asked to determine the equation of of the circle in uh, a where the circle has center e and passes through points b and t right so we must write it in the form of uh, x minus a all squared plus b um, y minus b all squared equals to r squared right so for us to identify um, this uh, equation right we know our point e um, the coordinates of point e right we know e is given as 12 and 0 from the diagram and um, let me just erase everything here for us to see so we know that um, Point E is this one here and another thing is we need to just substitute so really nothing much um, we have um, X minus a squared plus 
um, into y minus b all squared is equal to r squared, right? And this is the center, right? So you just want to substitute the center. So it's x minus 12 all squared plus y minus 0 all squared is equal to r squared, right? So um, let me just write it properly here. So it's going to be x minus 12 squared plus y minus 0 squared is equal to r squared. Right? So um, we're going to use the point. Um, we can either use the point of b, point of b, which is minus 4 and minus 4, right? Because we're told that um, b and t are the points, or rather they, it passes through these two, b and t, right? So we can substitute point b to find the radius of the circle. So where there's x, we're going to put minus 4, minus 12 there squared, plus um, where there's y, we're going to put minus 4, so it's minus 0, all squared is equal to r squared, right? So just add um, everything here, right? Add everything in your calculator, and you find r squared being equal to 272, right? So now, that would be an equation. The equation would be x minus 12, all squared, plus y minus 0 all squared is equal to 272. Um, because it's y minus 0, so just going to simply say x minus 12 all squared plus y squared is equal to 272. So this would be your equation. Is We are asked to determine the equation of the tangent to the circle at point B. Remember B is equal to minus 4 and minus 4, right? So we are asked to find the tangent at that point. I mean the equation of the tangent at that point. Um, what we need to note is this: um, if um, if e is, um, let me see. Um, so um, if the circle passes through point B, right? Um, we know very well that um, if maybe we were to draw the circle, it would look something like this. Actually, let me do it in another clean paper. So if this is the circle here, right, and this is point B, which is minus 4 and minus 4, and our center here is B, right, of 12 and 0. What we need to note is this. If this is the tangent, right, moving like that, and we know very well that the tangent is perpendicular to the radius, right? So meaning the gradient of the radius multiplied by the gradient of the tangent gives us negative one, right? And um, let's first find the, the, the gradient of the radius, right? Um, what we know is to find the gradient of the radius, we use point B of minus 4 and minus 4 and e of 12 and 0 right so m of r is equal to change in y over change in x is equals to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 right so um if this is your x2 and y2 here this is your x1 and y1 so you're gonna have uh y2 which is 0 minus into minus 4 divided by 12 minus into minus 4, right? So the gradient of the radius is 1 over 4, right? So that is the answer for the gradient of the radius, but we know the radius gradient multiplied by the tangent must give us negative 1. So 1 over 4 is the gradient of the radius multiplied by m of t is equal to minus 1. Divide by 1 over 4, both sides. Therefore, m of t, which is the gradient of the tangent, it's minus 4, right? So now we have the, the gradient of the tangent. So we have y is equals to mx plus c, which y is equals to minus 4x plus c. Let's use the point b for us to find the y-intercept. So it's going to be minus 4 and minus 4 there. Um, we substitute that we have minus 4 is equal to minus 4 into minus 4 plus c so which is minus 4 is equal to 16 
plus c so it transpose to the other side if minus 4 minus 16 equals to c so therefore c is equals to minus 20 right um so to write down the equation of the tangent it's y of t is equals to uh, minus 4x minus 20 so this is the equation of the tangent for this problem here so now um in question four of uh, analytical geometry um we have given the diagram with center n right which passes through these two points here and um, a parallelogram is formed from these points that are indicated here such that e is parallel to the x-axis um, cd is a tangent to the circle at center c or uh, circle at center to the circle at c sorry um, and cd is equals to six units right so um, as you can see in the diagram and the information provided so let's do 4.1 which says that um, write down the length of the radius of the circle so what we have here is for us to identify the radius of the circle this is the center um, and this is at the circumference right so to find this radius the length of this radius here because we are looking at a vertical line which is defining the y values right vertical lines are defining the y values we can easily find the length of these radius here using this y value here and this y value here so you can say the radius is equals to um please don't indicate the sign just write the values because we're looking for the length here so um, this y value here at the circumference it's negative one but we're just gonna write one um, and then plus this y value here it's equals to three so we're just gonna write three um, so it's equals to four units so the radius is equals to four units so that is the answer for this question here Um, now going to 4.2 um, we are asked to calculate um, the coordinates of C coordinates of C so now we know that the length of the radius is 4 units right we calculated it from here to here it's 4 units which is equals to from here to here of 4 units right right so um for us to find the coordinate of c we can simply use the distance formula because now we're having um c being here and this is d which is six units and this is four units um so we can simply use the distance formula um equating both of the that the distance formula to find the coordinate of c or um what we can do is this because we we already know the x value of c if you take a look um if i do this line here um you can see that oh, it's not really straight but you can see that um we we have the x value the x value this is the x value x being equals to minus one even here it's x being equals to minus one so definitely at c x is equals to minus one so if i write the coordinate of c it's going to be minus 1 and y like that, right? So now, I just want the value of y, which we can still use uh, the solution or the method that I indicated previously using the distance formulas, equating them both and finding the y value of y. Or you can simply um, use this. So what you can do is this. Is you, you know very well that your radius is four units right um so from here to here it's four units the same as from the center to c is four units so you can um you can you can say that from n which is minus or oh, let me write this n properly so from our center of n which is minus one and three 
the 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 y value of c is a shift four units up right so if we shift this three four units up it's going to be minus one uh three plus four right because why am i saying four units up it's because of this uh distance of the radius right it's four units so you can simply say four units up which would give you minus one and seven so that would be the coordinates of c which is minus one and seven hope you understood if you didn't please ask in the comment section um so uh we now know the coordinates of c So now we're going to do 4.2.2. Write down the or calculate rather the coordinates of D. Um, coordinates of D, which is this one here, right? So for us to really find the coordinates of D is we 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 already know the coordinates of C, right? Already know the coordinates of C and um, c is basically minus one and seven um and then d we don't know so it's x and y and another thing that we know is the coordinates of n which is um minus one and three we know the distance of uh, from c to n which is four units right and we also know the distance here which is six units right so um, for us to identify the coordinates of D we also know that if C is minus 1 and 7 right the y value is 7 and the y value is if you were to draw or write down the horizontal line here it's actually indicated by this um, parallelogram right so if C it's minus 1 and 7 so it means now that this point here our y value is equal to 7 so meaning that D X we don't know but we know Y is 7 right so we just need to identify the the X value of D right and for us to do that it's quite simple because um, remember that DC is actually or CD rider, uh, you can call it DC or CD, it's actually equals to six units, right? Um, so it's um, from this point here to there, it's six units, right? Which we can also do a shift if you think about it. Um, because now we know that D is equals to seven, I mean, sorry, it's equals to X here and seven um we need to do a shift from c going to d right um but now this is a horizontal shift it's going in that direction right so we are going to look at the x values right so that shift will do this um from minus one which was the the okay the x the sorry the y value will remain the same right as seven uh, let me just do this seven for the x value though the the, the c um was at minus one but because there's the 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 line is six units right or the distance of ct is six units it's moving towards that direction so we can simply add that six units so it's plus six right um which should give you five, right? Because it's a movement. This thing is moving in that direction, right? So it's going to be five and seven now, right? So th that would be the coordinate of D actually, because now it has moved from the point of C to the point of D with only six units. So that is actually the coordinates of D. We didn't need to calculate it but you can calculate it using the distance formula um, 
it's up to you or you can use the shift vertical horizontal shift to find the coordinate of d so um we're done with this part of the question we are going to find the area now um, 4.2.3 the area of triangle bcd where is it triangle b c d right um so we want to find the area of this triangle uh, that cool so to find the area we know that the equation for area is half base times height right and um let me just write it here we are having it triangle like that right which um, this is B this is C this is D right so um, what we need to note is this CD is equal to six units right we are given six units and this is horizontal right and um, so we can write down perpendicular line so it's going to be perpendicular to this so it's going to be a 90 degree there meaning now we just want to know the length from c to d we know the coordinate of b is minus uh let me see uh minus four and two right minus four and two right and then um let's see what would be the distance because we're looking at the y value right um y value is going to be because we know the coordinates of c um we know the coordinates of c from previous question right um c was actually minus one and seven right so we're just gonna like finding the difference the difference of seven and two right we're looking at this two we're looking at this seven because it's a y value so the difference is just gonna say seven minus two is equal to five so this is five five units right so um we have the perpendicular so which would be the perpendicular height of this triangle in purple so we have the perpendicular height we have the base of six units so this is would be the base right so the area is equals to half base times height of which area is equals to half our base is six units our height is five units which would give us 15 units squared right so that would be the area of our triangle bcd If you have any questions you didn't understand please ask in the comment section below okay so now we go to 4.3 which says that the circle has set, is centered at n right is reflected about the line of y is equals to x M is the center of the new circle which is formed. The two circles intersect at A and F. Calculate uh, the length of NM. Um, so N is the center, right, of this circle here, which um, the coordinates of N is minus 1 and 3, right? So it's minus 1 and 3. So if it reflects about this line here, which it's this line here, um y is equals to x it means now that if n is equals to minus one and three then for m it's going to be three and one right three and minus one sorry it's just a um this uh y value become the x value the x value becomes the y value right so it's just that um meaning it would be somewhere here um, if I were to indicate it, maybe it would be somewhere here just by 
assuming it'll be somewhere here, right? The center of M will be somewhere here, right? So, um, that is our coordinate of M, right? So now to find the length of MN is, um, now we know our M, which is three N minus one, our N being minus one and three. To find the, the length, of mn it's equals to the root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 so let me write this properly minus y1 squared right so if this is going to be our x1 this is going to be our y1 this is x2 and y2 so we will have um, the root of x2 being equal to minus 1 minus 3 right of x1 squared plus our y2 which is 3 minus minus 1 squared so it's going to be equals to minus 4 squared plus into uh, 3 plus 1 squared which is equals to 4 minus 4 squared plus 4 squared right um, so uh, 4 squared um, is equal to 16 plus 16 which is 32 right so the root of 32 so if it's simplified it should give us 4 root 2 so that is the length of mn right done now we want to identify uh, 4.3.2 which is the midpoint of AF right so what I need you to look at in this diagram so let me erase uh, everything here so remember that um, the new graph or the new um, equation of the circle or the diagram of the circle rather we are told that it reflects about the line y is equal to x and it passes through the line af it passes through af right so it's very important that we know that so now to find the midpoint of af we we know very well that if it passes through a right um a is one of the point and um what we need to note is f now which would be because i said um my center of m is going to be somewhere here I indicated that M is going to be somewhere here so which means the the circle would be in this side and maybe um, F would be somewhere here or even here depending on whichever point but we know F would be just in line with N right it would be just in line with N like this so um, which is going to be a shift it's going to be a shift um, in that direction, right? So, which means it's a horizontal shift, right? So horizontal shift, the radius still is the same as four units, right? So meaning um, it's going to shift four units to the right, right? So for, to, for us to find the coordinates of F, it's going to shift from the negative one here. So it's going to be negative one plus um, four units and then we, we remain with the three units which doesn't change because it's the y value here so which means the coordinates of f would be three and three right so this would be the coordinates of f which um now now that we have uh so it's gonna look like this so this would be our n which is minus one and three our f which is three and three and then um we have a here which is minus one and minus one so we are asked to find the midpoint of a f right the midpoint of this line of a f which is somewhere here so for us to find the midpoint we're going to use the coordinates of a and f a uh, let me just use um, so a which is minus one and minus one f which is 3 and 3 so to find the midpoint of this we're gonna say um, x of m midpoint is equal to x of a plus x of f 
divided by 2 which is equals to x of a is minus 1 plus x of f is 3 so divide by 2 so it's equals to uh, minus 1 plus 3 is going to give you min, uh, plus 2 divided by 2 which is equals to 1 right so x of m is equals to 1 and then um, let me just erase this because now we know the solution which is x is equals to 1 so now um, y of m is equals to y of a plus y of f over 2 so it's equals to um, this minus 1 minus 1 plus 3 divided by 2 is going to give us the same uh, y of m being equals to 1 so um, we having our midpoint as 1 and 1 for this problem here Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, suggestions, or comments, please write them in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos.